And now we move our way towards the southeastern United States to Virginia along with North and South Carolina. This region is much more prone to tropical cyclones than any other region we've covered so far, with a fair number of more intense or damaging storms making landfall too. Most of them you'll see shortly. This area has seen 41 tropical cyclones make landfall since 1950, 18 of them being tropical storms, 11 Category 1 hurricanes, 8 Category 2 storms, 3 major Category 3 hurricanes and a single Category 4 storm. The costliest cyclone was Hurricane Hugo in 1989, causing nearly $6 billion in damages, and the deadliest storm was Hurricane Floyd 10 years later, causing 38 fatalities. The last storm to make landfall here was Irene in 2011. In October 1954, tropical storm Hazel formed to the southeast of Barbados and moved towards the west, becoming a hurricane just before passing through the Windward Islands and continuing through the Caribbean Sea, never straying more than a few hundred miles from the continent of South America. The storm continued to intensify as it did this, reaching a peak as a Category 4 hurricane to the north of the border between Venezuela and Colombia. The storm slowed down in forward speed and turned towards the northeast, where a gradual weakening occurred until landfall in Haiti as a strong Category 2 storm. Hazel then moved northwards, curving slowly back towards the northwest as it passed through the Bahamas and back over open waters. The storm then re-intensified into a Category 4 storm for the second time, before weakening slightly prior to landfall in South Carolina. Some areas were decimated near Hazel's point of landfall, particularly along the coast where sustained winds attained Category 3 intensity. The storm caused several fatalities, hundreds of injuries and tens of thousands of buildings were damaged or destroyed in this region. The storm caused a total of at least $165 million in damages. Tropical storm Diana formed in September 1984 north of the Bahamas and began moving westwards and then paralleled the coast of Florida before eventually turning away and attaining hurricane status. The storm then began to approach the coast of South Carolina and continued to intensify, eventually peaking as a Category 4 hurricane just offshore North Carolina before executing a clockwise loop and slowly made landfall as a Category 1 storm. Diana then moved inland and maintained tropical storm intensity as it emerged back out to sea near Cape Hatteras. The storm caused heavy rainfall along the coast of North Carolina with over 15 inches recorded in some areas. The storm caused three fatalities and over $65 million in damages. Tropical storm Hugo formed to the southwest of the Cape Verde Islands in September 1989 and proceeded towards the west through the central Atlantic. Hugo then began to intensify fairly quickly and was two days later achieving its peak intensity as a Category 5 hurricane, an intensity it only managed for six hours. Hugo then began to weaken slightly and pass through the Leeward Islands as a powerful Category 4 storm before clipping the eastern coast of Puerto Rico. The storm then weakened out at sea as it moved towards the northwest before re-strengthening north of the Bahamas and accelerated into a landfall at its secondary peak intensity as a Category 4 hurricane in South Carolina. The storm caused heavy damage in that state in particular, with winds gusting into Category 3 intensity accompanied by a storm surge of up to 20 feet and peak rainfall totals of over 10 inches. In South Carolina, tens of thousands of buildings sustained damage and contributed to more than $5 billion in total damages across the United States' east coast. What would become Hurricane Fran became a tropical depression near the Cape Verde Islands in August 1996. After passing through the Atlantic for a number of days without a change in intensity, Fran was finally named in the Central Atlantic and the storm turned towards the northwest. Fran attained hurricane intensity and made its closest approach to the Lesser Antilles as a minimal Category 1 storm before slowing down and weakening to a tropical storm for a while. Fran then reattained hurricane status, moved towards the west and then curved towards the northwest while situated east of the Bahamas and eventually peaked as a Category 3 storm before making landfall in North Carolina as a major hurricane. Fran then moved inland and tracked into Canada while still a tropical depression.
A storm surge of 12 feet caused extensive damage along the coast of North Carolina and rainfall totals exceeded 15 inches in some areas, especially near the point of landfall. Fran caused widespread power outages and over a dozen fatalities, with damage of over $2 billion in total in this region. Tropical storm Floyd formed in the central Atlantic and proceeded towards the west-northwest towards the Leeward Islands. The storm veered north and attained hurricane status before turning back towards the west as it continued to intensify. Floyd reached its peak intensity as a Category 4 hurricane on approach to the Bahamas before curving back towards the north. However, the storm still tracked over one or two islands in the Bahamas before turning northwards then northeastwards before making landfall in North Carolina as a Category 2 storm. Floyd then continued northwards along the east coast as a tropical storm. The hurricane prompted widespread evacuations in Florida and then further north as the storm changed course, and the storm caused major damage along the coast of North Carolina, mainly in the form of flooding. However, strong winds and a storm surge of up to 10 feet caused damage along the coast. Numerous rivers overflowed after over 20 inches of rain fell in some areas, causing significant and widespread flooding across the state. The hurricane caused over $4 billion in damage in North Carolina and a further $100 million in damages in Virginia. Tropical storm Isabel formed in the Central Atlantic in September 2003, soon developing into a hurricane. From this point onwards, the storm intensified, reaching Category 4 intensity over open waters and then weakening for a short time before regaining strength. In the next few days, Isabel reached Category 5 intensity on three separate occasions, the first spell of over a day being the longest of these. After this, the storm turned towards the northwest and began to weaken, but held on to Category 2 intensity right up until making landfall in North Carolina. Isabel then weakened inland. Isabel produced strong winds which damaged buildings along the coast of North Carolina, also rendering hundreds of thousands of people without power. A strong storm surge also caused damage and flooding in North Carolina and in Virginia, as well as further north. In those two states, there resulted 34 fatalities, 32 of those in Virginia, as well as damages totaling over $2 billion. Hurricane Irene formed just east of the Lesser Antilles in August 2011 and passed over Guadeloupe and then Puerto Rico, becoming a hurricane as it crossed the latter. Irene levelled off in intensity for a while as it passed close to Hispaniola and then reached its peak as a Category 3 hurricane over the Bahamas. The storm then turned towards the northwest over the rest of the islands and then towards the north where gradual weakening continued. Irene eventually made landfall in North Carolina as a Category 1 hurricane, emerging out of Virginia and then passing close to the Delmarva Peninsula before continuing towards the northeast. Irene was a large storm when it came ashore the east coast of the United States and caused wind gusts of over 50 miles per hour in South Carolina, whilst further north sustained winds approached hurricane intensity at Cape Lookout. Over 10 inches of rain fell in parts of North Carolina coupled with strong winds that significantly damaged numerous buildings. Now to the southeastern extremities of the United States where we have Georgia and separating the open Atlantic from the Gulf of Mexico, the state of Florida. This area is one of the most active in terms of tropical cyclones and it would be hard to recall a year in which a storm didn't affect this area.
Most of the 85 landfall scenes since 1950 have occurred in Florida, the highest total in the Atlantic. 56 of these were tropical storms at landfall, 9 of them Category 1 hurricanes, 8 Category 2 storms, 9 major Category 3 hurricanes, 2 Category 4 storms, and a single devastating Category 5 hurricane landfall. The costliest storm in this region was Hurricane Andrew in 1992, causing $25 billion in damages. The deadliest storm was Hurricane Wilma in 2005, killing 61. The last storm to make landfall was Tropical Storm Andrea this year. Tropical Storm Donna formed at the end of August 1960 south of the Cape Verde Islands and continued towards the west-northwest, eventually developing into a hurricane and then a major hurricane a few days later. Donna then reached her peak intensity as a powerful Category 5 storm as it neared the Leeward Islands. The storm then brushed the islands as it moves towards the northwest and weakened into a Category 3 storm for a time. Donna then re-intensified to reach a secondary peak as a Category 4 hurricane over the southern Bahamas, brushed the coast of Cuba and then made landfalls in the Florida Keys and then the southwest of the mainland. Donna then continued through the peninsula, curving towards the northeast and exited through the northwest coast of the state. Still a Category 2 storm, Donna then moved on to North Carolina and points beyond. Florida bore the brunt of the storm, especially along the Florida Keys and in the southwest in general. Rainfall totals exceeded 10 inches in some areas, accompanied by a storm surge of up to 13 feet. Tens of thousands of homes and buildings were damaged and 13 fatalities were reported, along with many more injuries. In the state, Donna caused damages of at least $350 million, with minor damages also reported in Georgia. The precursor to Hurricane Eloise formed in the Central Atlantic and remained a tropical depression as it skimmed the northern Leeward Islands before attaining tropical storm intensity near Puerto Rico. Eloise continued towards the west, becoming a hurricane before making landfall on the northern coast of the Dominican Republic. Maintaining tropical storm intensity, Eloise straddled the south coast of Cuba and passed close to the Cayman Islands. A couple of days later, the storm moved towards the northwest as it clipped the northern tip of the Yucatan Peninsula and eventually attained hurricane status for a second time in the central Gulf of Mexico. The storm then intensified into a Category 3 major hurricane before making landfall on the Florida Panhandle and then moved inland and weakened. When the storm came ashore the coast of Florida, winds gusted to over 150 miles per hour, with hurricane conditions reported near the point of landfall. Widespread damage was the result, with many buildings damaged by strong winds, accompanied by a significant storm surge and heavy rainfall. In the state, damages totaled at least $150 million, with the remnants of the storm causing significant flooding in the mid-Atlantic region. Tropical storm Kate formed to the north of the Leeward Islands and after a spell of indecisiveness the storm held generally westward heading as it became a hurricane. The storm passed through the Turks and Caicos Islands and then the southern Bahamas, intensifying into a Category 2 storm along the way. The next day Kate made landfall in Cuba as a Category 2 hurricane and only weakened for a short while before regaining its strength in the Gulf of Mexico. Kate then peaked as a Category 3 hurricane as it curved towards the north and then began to weaken on its final approach to the Florida Panhandle where it made landfall as a Category 2 hurricane. Kate then continued northeast and emerged off the coast of North Carolina as a tropical storm before eventually turning post-tropical. Kate caused strong winds on the Florida Keys, leaving the westernmost islands without power. The storm then caused an 11-foot storm surge when it made landfall in northern Florida, causing beach erosion along with its strong winds and heavy rainfall. Wind gusts of strong tropical storm intensity were also reported in Georgia, as well as over 7 inches of rain in some parts. In these two states, damages resulted in over $300 million. Tropical Storm Andrew formed in August 1992 in the Central Atlantic before proceeding to the northwest. After failing to attain hurricane intensity for the best part of a week, Andrew finally became a Category 1 storm whilst curving towards the west between Bermuda and Hispaniola. Andrew then continued just south of due west whilst ramping up in its intensity, eventually becoming a Category 5 hurricane near the Bahamas. Andrew then passed over the northern Bahamas, weakened slightly, and then re-intensified into a destructive Category 5 storm as it made landfall in southern Florida. Andrew then continued towards the west-northwest in the Gulf of Mexico, maintaining wind speeds of 140 miles per hour until approaching Louisiana, when it slowed down and began to weaken just before making landfall. Andrew then continued towards the northwest and dissipated inland.
Hurricane Andrew caused catastrophic damage to parts of Miami-Dade County with wind gusts exceeding 160 miles per hour in a number of locations. Significant damage was also reported in surrounding areas and total damages amounted to over $25 billion in Florida, along with 44 fatalities. More than a million were left without electricity, whilst tens of thousands of buildings were completely destroyed. Late September 1995, a tropical depression formed near the Yucatan Peninsula and tracked over land for a few days whilst moving slowly in a northwesterly direction. When located near the tip of the peninsula, Opal was named as a tropical storm and the cyclone moved towards the west-southwest, eventually towards the open waters of the southern Gulf of Mexico. Opal then slowed down and made a tight turn towards the north, becoming a hurricane at the same time. Opal then turned towards the northeast and then continued to intensify, eventually reaching Category 4 intensity over the northern Gulf of Mexico on approach to the Gulf Coast of the United States. Opal then made landfall as a Category 3 hurricane and moved northwards inland where it eventually degenerated into a remnant low. In Florida, rainfall totals exceeded 15 inches in some areas with wind gusts well into the Category 4 bracket. Coastal buildings sustained the worst effects of the storm where a significant storm surge contributed to a damage total of $3 billion in Florida alone. In Georgia, strong winds continued with near hurricane conditions reported in numerous locations. This rendered thousands without power and thousands more trees were felled as a result. A tropical depression formed near Trinidad and Tobago in August 2004 and developed into Tropical Storm Charlie north of the ABC Islands. Charlie continued through the Caribbean and attained hurricane intensity shortly before its closest approach to Jamaica. The storm passed to the south and then made a close approach to the Cayman Islands before intensifying into a Category 3 storm by the time it made landfall in Cuba. Charlie maintained a lot of its strength as it emerged on the other side a few hours after the initial landfall. Charlie then rapidly intensified shortly prior to its second landfall in Florida, where it made a landfall as a strong Category 4 hurricane and continued northeast over Florida and back out to sea. With peak sustained winds of 150 miles per hour at landfall, widespread damage occurred throughout the southwest of Florida, with tens of thousands of structures destroyed or significantly damaged. In all, the storm caused damages of over $14 billion and 29 fatalities in the state of Florida. The next year, in July 2005, a tropical depression formed just north of Trinidad and Tobago and continued into the Caribbean Sea where it became a tropical storm Dennis. Dennis then passed between Haiti and Jamaica whilst gradually intensifying, eventually reaching Category 4 intensity on two occasions as it skimmed the coast of Cuba. During its second period as a Category 4 storm, Dennis made landfall in Cuba and weakened to a minimal hurricane when it emerged into the Gulf of Mexico. The storm continued towards the northwest, reaching Category 4 status for a third time for a while, until weakening shortly before its final landfall near the border with Florida and Alabama. Making landfall on the Florida side, Dennis caused moderate damages in southern Florida and on the Keys, with more substantial destruction occurring in the Panhandle region. A significant storm surge caused beach erosion and severely damaged several structures along the coast. Along with the storm surge, strong winds and heavy rain caused some flooding and rendered th hundreds of thousands without power. Damages resulted in more than a billion dollars in the state of Florida alone. Later that same year, Hurricane Wilma, record-breaking in its peak intensity, arrived in Florida as a Category 3 storm. The storm's passage was a quick one but still managed to cause tens of billions in damages. Many parts of the Florida Keys were inundated by a storm surge, whilst on the mainland destructive winds caused severe damage in parts of southwestern Florida and millions of residents were left without power for a time. The final damage total here was over $20 billion.
And now to the central Gulf Coast states of Alabama, Mississippi and Louisiana, the latter of which sees the most coastline onto the Gulf of Mexico, the stage in which many intense and destructive storms have formed and intensified. Since 1950, a total of 48 tropical cyclones have made landfall in this area, 22 of which were tropical storms, 12 of them Category 1 hurricanes, 3 Category 2 storms, 6 major Category 3 hurricanes, 4 Category 4 storms, and a single Category 5 hurricane. Hurricane Katrina is quite easily the storm that impacted this region the most severely, causing a world record $108 billion in damages and 1,817 fatalities in these states when it made landfall in 2005. The last storm to make landfall was Hurricane Isaac last year. In August 1965, a tropical depression formed in the central Atlantic at a fairly low latitude and then curved towards the northwest, passing just north of Barbados before moving through the Leeward Islands without intensifying. Tropical storm Betsy was finally named to the northeast of the Virgin Islands and continued towards the northwest, soon becoming a hurricane before stalling out at sea. After moving westwards at a slow pace for a time, Betsy then moved towards the northwest and eventually reached Category 4 hurricane intensity as it passed east of the Bahamas, and then conducted a clockwise loop whilst beginning to weaken. Bottoming out as a Category 2 storm, Betsy now moved southwest, passed through the Bahamas and then skimmed the southern tip of Florida as a Category 3 major hurricane. Betsy then entered the Gulf of Mexico where it attained Category 4 intensity for a second time and made landfall in southern Louisiana as a major hurricane before weakening inland. Betsy struck not too far from New Orleans and the city was affected by power outages and a strong storm surge in Lake Pontchartrain. Consequently, numerous levees failed and over 150,000 houses were flooded. Damages in the nearby states of Mississippi and Alabama sustained light to moderate damages. Put together with the significant and extensive losses in Louisiana, Betsy became the first hurricane to ever cause $1 billion in damages. Tropical Storm Camille formed in August 1969 just west of the Cayman Islands and quickly intensified into a major hurricane shortly before landfall near the western tip of Cuba. After a brief spell of weakening, Camille continued as before and achieved Category 5 intensity just a day later. The storm then continued across the Gulf of Mexico and bore down on the Gulf Coast where it made landfall with sustained winds likely of Category 5 intensity in Mississippi. The storm then moved inland and remained a tropical depression as it curved the path through Tennessee and Kentucky before emerging off the coast of Virginia. Camille then regained tropical storm intensity and moved out to sea. Near the point of Camille's landfall, many areas were severely damaged and many buildings along the coast were wiped out completely as winds gusted possibly in excess of 190 miles per hour. Along with this was a major storm surge of up to 24 feet as well as over 10 inches of rain which fell in some areas. The rainfall issue continued inland, especially over Virginia, exceeding 15 inches in western parts of the state. In all, many thousands of buildings were destroyed and over 250 fatalities were attributed to the storm. Camille also caused over $1.4 billion in damage. A tropical depression formed in between Haiti and Cuba in late August 1985 and paralleled the coast of northern Cuba, staying just inland until it attained tropical storm intensity and was named Elena. Elena continued towards the northwest, passing just by Havana and out to the Gulf of Mexico, at which point the storm became a hurricane. Elena continued northwestwards, but then executed a tight turn towards the east towards Florida. Elena then began to stall just off the coast of western Florida, yet still intensified into a Category 3 major hurricane as it turned back towards the west. Spending almost two days in the same general area, Elena accelerated off to the northwest, passing close to the Gulf Coast before making landfall in Mississippi as a Category 3 hurricane. Elena first affected the coast of Florida, causing serious beach erosion and caused damage to some structures along the coast. Elena caused the majority of its damage in Mississippi, where it made landfall, and from here wind damage was reported in the surrounding states of Alabama and Louisiana. In total there are nine fatalities, two of which occurring in this region, and damages amounted to around $1.3 billion. Tropical Storm Juan formed towards the end of October that same year and moved erratically towards the northeast through the Gulf of Mexico. Juan, two days after forming, attained hurricane status whilst bearing down on the coast of Louisiana. The storm then turned towards the west just offshore. 
Maintaining hurricane intensity, Juan curved towards the east and looped back towards the north, where it made landfall still as a Category 1 hurricane. The storm then weakened inland before turning back towards the south and veering towards the east back out into the Gulf of Mexico. Juan then clipped the southeastern tip of Louisiana and made another landfall near the border with Florida and Alabama before dissipating inland. Due to Juan's slow movement and a large amount of time spent near or over the coasts of Louisiana, Mississippi and Alabama, rainfall totals exceeded 10 inches over a large area. Heavy rains and strong winds caused significant damage along the coastlines and damages totaled at least $1.5 billion in damages and several fatalities in this region. In September 1998, a tropical depression formed to the south of the Cape Verde Islands and soon became Tropical Storm George as it moved over the open Atlantic waters. Maintaining a fairly steady heading, the storm gradually intensified over several days, eventually peaking as a Category 4 hurricane, an intensity it maintained for over 24 hours until it neared the Leeward Islands. George then passed directly over Antigua and St Kitts, and then continued to track towards another landfall in Puerto Rico as a Category 2 hurricane. The storm then had a quick burst of intensification before its next landfall in the Dominican Republic. At this point, the storm detained sustained winds of 120 miles per hour. George maintained hurricane status as it left Hispaniola through Haiti and tracked over the northern coast of Cuba before passing close to the Florida Keys as it re-attained Category 2 intensity. George then made its final landfall in Mississippi as a Category 2 hurricane before stalling near the coast and then turning eastwards, where it continued as a tropical depression for two days until dissipating near the northeasternmost extent of Florida. The storm caused significant damage and flooding along the northern Gulf Coast with a storm surge of over 10 feet in some areas and heavy rains of over 15 inches in numerous areas contributing to flooding inland. In this region, there are four fatalities and over $2 billion in damages, mainly due to the hurricane's heavy rain and storm surge, as well as winds of over 100 miles per hour near the point of landfall. A tropical depression formed in mid-September 2002 in the Central Atlantic at a fairly low latitude. The system continued towards the west-northwest, attaining tropical storm intensity a day before passing to the south of Barbados. Tropical storm Lily, as it was then called, then passed through the Windward Islands and passed through the southeastern Caribbean. At this point, Lily lost its fight against strong vertical wind shear and degenerated into a remnant low for nearly two days before regenerating south of Haiti. Lily then moved further north past the east of Jamaica and then curved around to face the northern coast. Lily then continued westwards and finally attained hurricane intensity between Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. The storm then continued towards the northwest and passed over the Isle of Youth as it strengthened into a Category 2 hurricane, an intensity that Lily held as it crossed the western tip of the Cuban mainland. As it entered the Gulf of Mexico, Lily achieved its peak intensities of 145 miles per hour Category 4 hurricane and then continued on to a landfall in Louisiana, quickly weakening just before doing so. Lily then moved inland and dissipated. Rainfall totals were highest in Louisiana, attaining 7 inches in some eastern parts of the state. In the landfall area, wind gusts reached 120 miles per hour and a storm surge of 12 feet caused flooding and damaged several thousand structures, as well as significant but not widespread power outages. In total, the storm caused over $800 million in damages in this region. Tropical storm Ivan formed in early September 2004 whilst located towards the southwest of the Cape Verde Islands and the storm continued just south of west for a while before beginning to change its heading to a slightly more northerly one. Ivan began to intensify becoming a hurricane and by the next day had attained category 4 intensity which it only held for 6 hours before weakening again. Ivan weakened into a category 2 storm but reattained major hurricane status as it passed to the south of Barbados and moved through the Windward Islands. Ivan then continued into the Southern Caribbean, eventually becoming a Category 5 hurricane for the first time north of Venezuela. The hurricane then turned towards the northwest, reverting back to a Category 4 intensity until its closest approach to Jamaica was made. Ivan then reached Category 5 status for a second time, losing it once more as it passed the Cayman Islands, only to regain it for the third and longest period as it headed towards the Yucatan Channel. 
Upon entering the Gulf of Mexico, Ivan began to weaken once more, albeit slowly, and the storm still packed sustained winds of at least 120 miles per hour by the time it made landfall in Alabama. The storm moved inland, dissolving into a remnant low near the Delmarva Peninsula before curving back around through Florida and having a short second spell as a tropical storm near the coast of Louisiana and Texas. Having already caused significant damage through many parts of the Caribbean, Ivan made landfall in Alabama where winds of 100 miles per hour or more were reported, as well as a storm surge of 14 feet near the landfall area. Strong winds throughout the state also caused nearly half a million people to lose power, but there are no fatalities in the state. Whilst the storm made landfall in Alabama, Florida arguably experienced the worst conditions from Ivan, which included three tornadoes. Throughout the United States, Ivan caused damages of $13 billion. In August 2005, a tropical depression formed over the Bahamas and was named Tropical Storm Katrina on the 24th of that month. Katrina proceeded northwestwards, turning towards the west and then veering south as it made landfall in Florida. At this point, Katrina became a hurricane and passage over Florida was not a great inhibitor. The storm continued into the Gulf of Mexico, passing close to the Florida Keys as a Category 2 storm, and Katrina turned back towards the northwest, attaining Category 5 intensity in the central Gulf of Mexico. Katrina peaked with sustained winds of 175 miles per hour and a central air pressure of 902 millibars. The hurricane then bore down on Louisiana where it made landfall as a major hurricane, first in southeastern Louisiana with sustained winds of 125 miles per hour and then in Mississippi at the slightly weaker intensity of 120 miles per hour. Katrina moved inland and dissipated near the Great Lakes. Katrina's most publicized damages and effects occurred when the hurricane storm surge caused historic flooding throughout most of New Orleans by breaching numerous of the city's protective levees. Severe flooding also occurred when the storm washed ashore the coast of Mississippi and Alabama. Along large parts of these coastal areas, whole communities were devastated and numerous buildings near the coastline were completely destroyed. Over 1,500 fatalities occurred in Louisiana, with over 200 more in Mississippi, as well as several others in surrounding regions. In all, Katrina caused damages of $108 billion, the costliest cyclone in history to date. In late August 2008, a tropical depression formed to the north of Venezuela and moved towards the northwest, soon becoming Tropical Storm Gustave as it crossed the Caribbean Sea. Gustave then developed into a hurricane before making landfall in southern Haiti, at which point the hurricane stalled and weakened back to a tropical storm. Gustave then jogged towards the southwest, affecting Jamaica as it passed close to the southern coast of the island nation, and then began to intensify after clearing land. Gustave passed close to the Cayman Islands as a Category 2 storm and continued to intensify to reach its peak as a 155 mile per hour Category 4 hurricane as it made landfalls on the Isle of Youth and then onto the Cuban mainland, before beginning to weaken as it emerged into the Gulf of Mexico. Gustave continued towards the northwest and made landfall in Louisiana as a Category 2 hurricane and then moved inland and slowed down its forward motion as a tropical depression before turning post-tropical over Missouri. Landfalling in Louisiana as a Category 2 hurricane with sustained winds of 155 miles per hour, Gustave caused heavy rains exceeding 15 inches in parts of Louisiana. The storm caused tornadoes, strong winds and widespread power outages along with flooding further inland. On the coast, the storm surge was as high as 15 feet along some parts of the Gulf, with 53 fatalities reported in the United States along with over $4 billion in damages.